Okay, so on this table we have three restored firearms. Uh, let's start with the Remington up here. This is a high grade Model 11, and we just picked this up from Cabela's. And we bought it because we're going to use it for a video, but we want to show you the difference between a good restoration and a bad restoration. All right, look at what they've done to this checkering. They have halfway wiped this out. This all has to be recut now. And look at this wood down here. Look at how much wood they've taken off this. Look at how proud the trigger guard. You're not supposed to be able to see any of that. That's all stuff that we have to repair now. Whoever's refinished this gun has made more work for me than anything else. On the top tang, it's not so bad. They didn't really hurt anything much here. And the metal, they didn't mess with. The metal's in pretty good shape. We're going to be able to save this gun and do a pretty good job. When I was just up at Cabela's and I seen it. I felt so bad for the thing. I said, we better pick this thing up and save it. But we wanted to show you how, where restorations get a bad name. And this is a prime example. Who's ever done this, and this is a gorgeous piece of wood, by the way. That's why we, one of the reasons we want to save it. But if you look at how they sprayed finish through the checkering, how they sanded it and they sanded it low, that is a terrible job. I'd be embarrassed to put my name on that. Uh, and you can even see where, you know, they didn't bother to repair anything. It, it, that, that's a terrible restoration. So that's a terrible wood job. But the metal's fine. That's all savable. We're going to restore that thing and be just fine. Now on this one here, we picked this one up off Gun Broker here about a week ago. The wood has been restored. And they didn't do the best job on the wood. But this one's not as bad as the, as the Remington we just showed you. But here's the real kick in the pants. Let's see if we can get in here real tight. Whoever called themselves a gunsmith who worked on this buffed on this thing so hard they actually wallowed out all the engraving. And that is a terrible, terrible. Now I have to sand out all their mistakes and then have my engraver touch it all up. That, that, that's a huge job, but we bought the gun cheap because of the poor quality restoration. So on these two guns, the restorations were so bad they actually hurt the value of these two guns. Cabela's had had this one for almost a year up in Hazelwood trying to get rid of it. This one here we got offline and like I said, we bought it for like 800 bucks. We bought it cheap because it was just absolute garbage. Like I said, I would be embarrassed to put my name on either one of those jobs. But here's the third one. And this is one that we've done. When you look at it real carefully, this is what makes or breaks a job. When you look at the checkering, it's been protected and done right. The wood finish is nice and flush with the wood. It's not high, it's not low. When you look at the bottom of it, same thing. Now that's a job you can put your name on and be proud of it. Now when you look at the metal work, get it up here, get all my nasty fingerprints off of it. Look at the difference on the engraving of this. Get a nice close up compared to this one. Get them right next side, side by side for you. This is something I'm, and actually this one sold, this, I got a guy named Mike coming down from Illinois to buy this gun this week, and it sold for 2,200 bucks. But it's a good looking sweet 16. But restorations are getting a bad name because of people doing poor quality work. We understand where it comes from, we really do. But if you've seen a bad restoration, Compared to a good restoration, it's night and day difference. But anyway, we want to point that out to you. It's just, uh, we, can, we sell restored guns and we do quite well with it. But we want to show you where the bad stigma is coming from. And these two are prime examples. The wood and the metal on these two are absolutely horrific jobs. I, like I said, I'd be embarrassed to put my name on either one of them. But this one here... If it was in my gun cabinet at the house, I'd be quite pleased with it. And like I said, it doesn't matter what I think about it. There's a guy coming down to buy it. So a gun's only worth what someone's willing to pay for it. And that's a good example right there. But anyway, we just want to show you we get it. If, if Restored guns have a bad name on the market. And it's from people doing amateur work. And some of these guys do it for a living, so they are professionals. Or they call themselves professionals. But at the end of the day, all you have to do is look at the fine details and that'll tell you whether it was a good job or bad job. And these three right here will show you the difference between good and bad quality restorations.